Thrallers, Miller, Jim and John, and it's the long-awaited Denver Death Fest wrap-up. The little, all the little clips that I had saved that we took, yeah, throughout the days. We, my whole idea of like doing this daily blog and stuff was like totally <laughs> null and void when I realized how much running around that I had to do to keep shit square. Yeah, the, the, the fast year we thought we were going to do a bunch of like video blogs and interviews and whatnot, and it just ended up being such a crazy uh, event, and um, it's just really awesome to meet people and hang out and enjoy music, and it, it so it didn't go the way we planned with the video blog, but, you know, it was also our first time doing something like that, and mm -hmm. I, I don't, I just don't think we, we factored in all the variables of having to do actual work and watch 30 bands play so mm -hmm. yeah and i uh, like I, said, I was running around helping the bands uh, it was a weird kind of thing where we had to shift between uh rooms so i was helping coordinate that with bands and stuff so we had to get the show moving and keep it smooth and we wanted to enjoy it a little bit too and enjoy it we did because the very first day of the fest of course was on april 20th 420 and, uh, you know, what a, a wonderful way to kick off a show. Of course, we had Narcotic Wasteland headlining that evening. Um, if you guys haven't seen Narcotic Wasteland, you're missing the fuck out. Yeah, no shit. Dallas Teller Wade from Nile. And uh, a couple more uh, new buddies now that we have in that band. Yeah, they'll be here uh, Bowling Green on August 20th. And I got them booked at Piers in Fort Wayne August 13th. So 13th with Embryonic Autopsy and then uh, here in BG. Local show. Of course, Embryonic Autopsy also played Denver Death List. So. Yeah, they wrapped up that killer Saturday with Pyrexia yep, and stuff. Yep, it was and, amazing. Uh, to start it out, Fetal Embalmment, the first act. Brendan, with his uh, one-man act, feel about it, it was a killer show. Uh, I, I dug the shit out of him. It's like, all like, kind, and like, super kind and yeah. polite, and like, the nicest dude ever. And uh, he's just up there, the most, talking about the most brutal shit, in like, the nicest way in between songs. I mean, picture, like, Mortician and 200 Stab Wounds getting together and jamming. That was Fetal Embalmment. He put on a fuck of a show, man. Uh, for, for a one-man band, for, for just that, that dude by himself, it was pretty fucking good. I would love to have him out yeah, uh, yeah. at any given time to come play shows or just to hang out. Again, super nice guy. But, Get uh, him and uh, Poon Tickler. You know, like, make it like just the smallest band show. <laughs> And Grave Dancer. Grave Dancer's only got two people in it. So. Yeah, Grave Dancer. There you Grave go. Grave Dancer. Yeah. Actually, Jake from Grave Dancer. Jake. Uh, there you go. There's your band. Get Brendan. You guys <laughs> yeah. rent a van. Come out. Yep. Uh, yeah, Jake from Grave Dancer made, of course, uh, that shirt and sent it to Josh and then made also Denver Death Fest shirts. Um, here, let me yeah, know. Let's, let's do an unboxing here. He sent us a bunch of goodies. Yeah, of course he made... Denver Death Fest t-shirts. Uh, these were a limited run, so if you didn't get one, sorry about your luck. Um, you'll have to wait until we do this again, but of course there's again all the bands that played on the back of it. Really fucking cool. This is a really, really great shirt. Jake actually works at a screen printing shop, so it, it works out to our advantage. And of course he sent a couple of uh, Grave Dancer CDs. So these see are, that uh, collection update. Yep, see it in the collection update. Uh, let's see here. And of course, the Grave oh. Dancer shirt that Josh is wearing. He sent me like, let's see, one, two, Jesus. He sent a lot. Three. And then two more Denver Death Fest oh, shirts. Ah, he sent enough stuff to uh, go in our next giveaway box. Yeah, yeah, actually, actually, yeah. Yeah, I think definitely, we can manage that. Definitely something. Hey, here's another shirt, so shit. Medium, he sent all the fucking sizes. Thank you, dude. Yeah. For uh, the next giveaway, there's going to be a few. But this, I've been actually dying. I knew this was in here. This is a um, this is a, a black denim print um, of Denver Death Fest. This yeah. actually might make a decent fucking back patch. Mm -hmm. uh, 
This is uh, basically okay. the PDF file that I put over uh, Trent's artwork. Trent did the artwork. Yeah, in front Trent of the Jacobs. shirts is Trent Jacobs, Sinister Star. And then uh, I just cleaned everything up and put it on top of some That's stone pretty art. neat. That's pretty, I really like that. That's really neat. Yeah, I'm kind of stoked he printed that. That's cool. So anyway, enough rambling about that. Let's talk yeah. more about the fest here. About the fest, uh, Divine Torture. Those guys are so sweet. They hooked me up with a sweet-ass shirt. It's a xenomorph uh, giving birth to a baby Jesus. It's uh, one of the coolest shirts I own now. So <laughs> thank you. And then, of course, Grave Dancer came out and kicked all of our asses. So yeah, so uh, first of all, I want to say we weren't sure what was going to happen with this fest and how many tickets we were going to sell and how many people would be there and what the environment would be like. You know, we I don't want to say we flew into it blindly, but being that we were in Ohio the entire time um, that we helped create this festival, we didn't really know what we were getting into. Yeah. But let me just say that um, Thornton, Colorado, which is where Trailside Saloon was located, you guys fucking brought it. All three days, it was sold the fuck out. Yeah, it was packed. I, I cannot believe that. And everybody was super nice. And I, I, I can't get over how, like, just like magical the whole event was. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah. Triune, another local band. Dude, Triune, Triune, Triune um, I've been talking to Corey from Triune quite a bit. They want to make it out here. Um, like, progressive death metal, dude. I got hardcore opeth vibes and they fucking destroyed and in talking to them that was one of their first like bigger shows so that's that was really kind good. of surprising because they were pretty tight yeah they were really they were really fucking tight. good uh, of course venom valor i uh, kind of like a metal chorish death chorish band Came out and Heavy destroyed. Shit, Dude, I mean, just everybody did such a good job. Neuromorphic, fucking um, oh, Len. That was like Len from Cephalic Carnage is in Neuromorphic. And that was uh, the surprise of the show for me because I hadn't heard too much of it. And after like the first song, I was like, "Holy shit, this is like one of my new favorite fucking bands." So I I hope that they're there next year because uh, uh, they're they're fucking awesome there. I got to meet Len, dude. That was one of the... Yeah, was, like, I've always yeah. wanted to meet Len from Cephalic Carnage just because I think he's such a fucking entertaining dude. Yeah. And we ended up talking about... I was wearing my Maryland Death Fest hoodie, and we ended up talking about Maryland Death Fest, and I was telling him, you know, I was there, and he was like, oh, cool, let's get a picture. So that's a thing. And then Narcotic Wasteland came out and kicked everyone's ass. Mm -hmm. That's how we closed the, the first night. What a cool night. And then we ended up going to uh, Late Night Breakfast dinner oh, yeah. or something or other with Narcotic Wasteland and talked about Transformers mm. and uh, horror movies. Yeah, usually it was like a nightcap with X people at X restaurant. Yeah, we did it several times. We'll, uh... What do you think? Day two. Day two. I'm alive. <laughs> ah! <laughs> what was that? It's the Lock Chest Monster. That looks scary in HD. <laughs> so yeah, so that and I had to visit a dispensary, uh, Native Roots Cannabis. Thank you. you uh, shout out to you guys. It was a, a, a wonderful experience. I won't go too in-depth with that, but I was in Denver, Colorado on 420. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> you had to load up, load up because Friday the 21st, the headliner was Maul. Maul, Gorgatron, just those two bands right there would be just uh, a show. Dude, Maul, I, I've come to enjoy Maul so much. We've seen them... I've seen them now three times, <laughs> once at Denver Death Fest, and then I've seen them twice after Denver Death Fest. Garrett, the lead singer of Mall, we've become a... Uh... Fantastic dude. Yeah, fantastic dude. Wonderful guy, and he, of course, was all about the show. Uh, Mall said it was the best show on their tour. The, on that little mini That's tour awesome. they did, Mall said it was the best show, so... That was pretty cool, but yeah, if you guys haven't seen Mall, you're missing the fuck out. Yeah, no shit. And Gorgatron, dude. Gorgatron yeah. kills... So does our boys in Cathexas. Yeah, finally Coming got out to... from Texas. It came out from Texas, our boys in Cathexas. Finally got to see Cathexas. Uh, they uh, they're they were fucking nasty, dude. Some of that riff oh, work is my just, goodness. Like, the, all the nasty, gnarly faces, bitter beer face you want. It's yeah. It's all in that, that riff work. Of 
course, I had to announce Cathexis, and, like, I got up there, and then I was standing in front of 250 people, and I went, uh <laughs> Like, years ago, I, I was the best man at somebody's wedding, and uh, I didn't prepare a speech. I thought I was going to wing it, and I stood up and went, uh Hmm. That's okay. You enjoy beer. And it was the same kind of thing when I stood up to announce Get Texas. All the things I should have said that I didn't say, I will say on the next time. I promise you guys, I will say way more because they were the first band I contacted for Denver Death. That's the very first band I thought of, and they were the very first band to respond. And I've been such a huge fan of those guys for a long time. Anyway, it was cool to finally fucking see them. Yeah, and we wouldn't have found out about the Jerusalem the restaurant, the Mediterranean place <laughs> that we went to. That place was... Fantastic. And also on Friday, we had uh, kind of an oddball band, I guess, that stood out amongst the others. It's always sunny in Tijuana. They were like a personal pick for me because I just I love their groove and their kind of feel. And then when you meet the dudes, they totally fit that like chill fucking <laughs> like vibe that they give off in the music. So it was, it was awesome to meet those dudes. Yep. I Am Destruction was also there. They came out and absolutely destroyed. Um heavier than shit, super nice guys. Um, their guitarist Marco Reyes and I have been chit-chatting on Facebook for the last mm -hmm. month or two now. Super cool dude. Um, yeah, I spoke with their drummer at length afterwards. And, yes. Uh, the, the guys are, are great dudes. Yep, great dudes, great band. They definitely brought the thunder. Um, very commanding vocalist. Yeah, very commanding. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, speaking of vocalists, uh, Carl, like, and Rottenness. They didn't mention Rottenness. Yeah, he was pulling double duty at Rottenness and Gorgatron playing that night. So, and, and he brought it. That dude is uh, so full of like energy and life. Mm -hmm. and, like just loves being all up in 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 the show and, and enjoying the present. Kind of. That's what I got about him. He totally chilled. Me. What a huge stoner and super relaxed off stage. You yeah. never know. <laughs> yeah, totally chill, dude. Um, very approachable. So yep. he'll, he'll nerd out with. And Crotalis was in there. I, we meant to like screenshot, or I should have like took uh, saved the pictures that I took of the exact list of where bands yeah, were. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Crotalis was in there somewhere. Should have. I'll be better about that next year. Yes, yeah, so again, so another awesome band, a bunch of killer dudes. Um, just that, man, Friday was a stacked fucking day. And, and you know what the interesting thing was is that Carcass was also in Denver the same night. And we were still sold out, which means people chose Denver Death Fest over Carcass, which baffles me because I remember when I found out that Carcass was playing, yeah, I, I mentioned in the chat, I said, is it in poor taste to leave my own festival to go see Carcass? Um, which obviously I didn't do, but yeah, we we still sold out that night over fucking Carcass, so... I don't I'm, know, we had, a, we had a killer show. So yes, we did. As, as good as that Carcass is and was i'm sure you would have got all these bands we had a stack line we had a stack lineup on saturday with uh, our boy chris the dudes in pyrexia headline saturday with embryonic autopsy and toll was in there the tuma we had to be Dude. really good friends with uh well you know friends with ben i guess yeah not really yeah. good but set them up on their own little tour coming up through here. They're going to be playing in Fort Wayne and Bowling Green. And then also in Michigan. Kind of doing a thing with uh, 10,000 Teeth, Yatuma, Cephalic. Some heavy hitters in the area. Yeah, Pyrexia, Embryonic Autopsy, Atoll, War Crown, um, Eyes of Perdition, uh, Human Paint. The, the drummer of Human Paint actually ran sound for... Yeah, and Moingo. At, at least, yes. yeah. At least fucking half the first and he did a good job but yeah human paint whooped ass um eyes of perdition angelic desolation josh has the hat yeah those dudes are fantastic again killer dudes do it what impressed me about the festival is everyone was like really chill and relaxed and like everyone was there to have a good time it was like a giant party where you could like sell your shit yeah pretty much yep. Yep. <laughs> Which is what it should be. That's what a, a music fest or really any show should be. You should be there to see music and hang out and have a good time. Uh, we were originally going to a CD store, record store, you know, of course, Nick. You'll see some footage here in a minute, but it was Angelo's we were uh, heading to. 
So we pull up to Angelo's, and right there in the parking lot, we see the brutal poodle. And obviously, it struck our interest. Like, look at this artwork. Like, this is totally our place to go. And we get in there, and it was like the restaurant uh, that we don't have here. It sucks. Yeah, they were they were playing uh, metal music. Got to eat and listen to Pantera and Chimera and, and a bunch of, like, old-school deathcore bands. While I was eating, and the food was spectacular. Yeah, and the, the names of all the, the dishes and whatnot, the mixed drinks, all death metal related, metal related. It's yep. fantastic. The owner is killer. Uh, down on South Broadway, Angelo's and the Brutal Poodle is like a killer duo there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can already tell this is our kind of place. Check it out, the Brutal Poodle. All right, we walked into this place and already fucking Sepultura blaring. I don't know how much of this is gonna pick up, but yeah, check this place out. It's awesome, Angelo CD and vinyl. Nick's in there picking out his shit, and then we're gonna go to eat, which is like right next door. All right, we're gonna see how the boss is doing. What'd you find? Ooh, there we go. I don't want to spoil anything, though. That's going to be in a collection update. Look at what Nick found. I believe that's an old promo copy of Macabre's Dahmer, which I've been looking for a copy of this in any form for a while. I believe New Hill Glass is reissuing them either later this year or next year because Macabre signed a deal with them. We went over the last album, but I mean, this is, this is kind of cool to find something this rare. Like, you don't see these old promo copies very often. Yeah, it's even got the little... Overview in the back. That is awesome. And the old uh, Olympic records that label doesn't even exist anymore. Hey, these guys look familiar. Ah, yeah, there it is. Look at that. Man, this would be an awesome vinyl to have. If you can, obviously, down is awesome. So, if you can find this one, I would encourage buying this as well. Actually, buy all the vinyl. Oh man, can you believe that? Someone got rid of your shit, man. I'm sorry, bro. There's so much here, I don't even know where to start. I did find a copy of Replica. That's pretty cool. But holy shit. Holy shit. Nick in his element right now. Loving life. Yeah, that record store is something else. That not only do they have a massive metal section, like massive, like it's unreal how many metal albums are in that store. Yeah, unreal. They have a, a huge vinyl section. Um, they sell underground. Yep, underground. They sell T-shirts and memorabilia and all sorts of like weird crap and pipes and you know because you're in Denver. And uh, yeah, it was a, a really cool place. We ended up going there twice. And to the Brutal Poodle twice. Mm-hmm. Yep. So many places we could have gone, but we chose to go back to the Brutal Poodle and the Angelos. Cause Why? Because they're awesome. Yeah, because it was that that fucking memorable. Yeah, Brutal Poodle, the burger, was fantastic. I, we'll just watch the video. Yep. So yeah, what a one-two punch here down South Broadway in Denver. Angelos and the Brutal Poodle. My burger was brutal. Nick's fucking mac and cheese, brutal. Noonan's... Grilled cheese brutal. Brutal. I added brutal to mine. Jess's bullshit be- vegan thing. Fucking brutal. So, and of course, you know, the, the festival being only three days, I wanted at least one day to uh, hang out in Colorado and to just kind of kick back and celebrate a successful festival. And they did that by letting me scare the shit out of all of them. Oh my God. Basically. They, uh, you know, Nick's a flyer. <clears throat> I've already been through Denver. I've driven. I'm a professional driver. And uh, so... We didn't <laughs> die. Yeah. It won't die. So yeah, we stopped down near Red Rocks at Ozzy's, the ice cream shop that I tagged previously in my trip because they were closed. Got there like one minute before close. I was the last customer, so it was awesome. And we uh, got in the car and I took them up 74 at Red Rocks down there. <laughs> Going up 74, it's a beautiful drive it is it's awesome uh, if you're down there and you have a minute to go 74 and just drive off into the mountains carelessly i recommend it in, in fact 
we, we drove so far into the mountains that Josh decided to leave oh. this main road, so to speak, and take us on another road. Yeah, uh, so, in, <laughs> <laughs> so we were going through 74, like normal road 74, we're through Kittredge. We stopped for bathroom break or, or something like that, and I do believe it was Nick that mentioned that he didn't like like sketchy gravel roads and mountains. And uh, that was the wrong thing to say because Kittredge has some sketchy fucking roads. And yes, I know do. that. The Kerr Gulch is right up there, and I know that. <laughs> so I also know that Kerr Gulch Road is up there. And that road is awesome for me, and it was absolutely terrifying for all of them. And it, it, it wasn't, like, like, normally it's not that bad, but, like, the road didn't have uh, guardrails, and one false move, uh, we would have gone down, uh, uh, yeah, straight down into a pit of fucking sadness. Like, it, it, it was beautiful up there, but God damn it. Yeah, I, Nick <laughs> said that. I get down this road, he... He puckers up real good, and then out of everybody, I get this tap from this guy. Yeah. Hey, hey, this is hey, be careful, dude. Hey, right? Be, hey, be this careful. isn't this isn't cool. Yeah. I don't uh, <laughs> I don't like this. I want I want so, a new deck and a new de and a new dealer. This is I don't like this. Yeah. So it's about twenty minutes of going up that road of them just like freaking out, me maniacally <laughs> laughing, and Jess just sitting in silence. Yep. It was, was one of the best drives that was pretty much it and then uh i think she mentioned that uh afterwards <laughs> so after that's done she mentioned she's like thank god there are no tunnels on that road because i hate tunnels i was like you do you really hate tunnels sure enough well let's just <laughs> go to the eisenhower tunnel see how you feel about that one yep she so, made it she survived she it. and it then fun. and then we ended up in uh what breckenridge and so nope. just no silver thorn yep yep and then we ended up, ended up, of course, in Silverthorne, Colorado. Just beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, a little brewery there. Gig yeah, we, well, we had to stop because the road was closed because of, what, weather? No, there, there was, was an a, accident. There was an accident on the other side of the tunnel going back into Denver. So I, I'm a seasoned driver. I know about how long that's going to take given what I saw. And I was yep. like, we have enough time for like a beer. We can just chill out and then, you know, yeah. sit for a good half hour and let that beer work through, get the water in me and be on our way. Let me tell you something. For those that aren't used to drinking in high altitudes, I was pretty, pretty feeling pretty nice uh, off of one beer in, uh, in in higher elevation. I was, I'd kind of forgotten that I was in higher elevation. I was like, man, that was a really good beer. Huh. Yeah. Yep, that's why I only stuck to that one, like, four percenter. <laughs> it's like a 10-ounce pour. It was good. It's fine. Overall, Denver Death Fest was an amazing experience. Um, I uh, Big thanks to Zach at Swinging News Productions for helping us put this all together. Brother, thank you so much. It was a great time. Um, huge thanks to our buddy Nate, who ran sound. Yeah, and also it was in Occultus Verum. Also was, was in Occultus Verum. Saturday. Yeah, that we forgot to mention. I, I'm yeah. sorry, Occultus Verum, um, amazing black pagan black metal band. Mm -hmm. um, one of the only black metal bands we had on the bill. Um, huge thanks to our sponsors, Dead Records. Um, Doom and Groom. Doom and Groom. Metal Maidens. The Metal Maidens. The Colorado Death Metal Militia. Militia. So in the end, Denver Death Fest was pretty fucking cool. Um, it blew my mind. Um, some of my wildest dreams were made in those three, four days we were out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I definitely can't wait to do it again. Of course, we are going to do it again here coming up next, next year. year. Although we don't have dates finalized yet, we do have it in our minds to do it once again. So if you want to stay tuned and find out what's going on, hit subscribe. We'll keep you notified. Give the video a thumbs up if you kind of dig what we did. Uh, there's a, this is probably a long video, so thanks for hanging in there. Appreciate that. Yep. We're also on Patreon if you'd like to help us out there. There's a link down below uh, to also thrallsofmetal.com, which is currently under construction. Yep. It will be up and running as soon as we get shirts, mm -hmm. which is coming really soon. Thank you to our buddy Dylan, who sent us new artwork for the shirts. Um, yeah, there. Yeah. We'll, show you, the, we'll show you the line work at least. The line work. 
Oh, pretty well, sick. Go. Wait till you see the colors in it. It's absolutely gross. But yeah, uh, Dylan hit us up at the show. He said, hey man, I'm a huge Thrills of Metal fan. I, I drew you guys this. And pretty fucking rad. So yeah, new shirts coming. So yep. the website will be back up and running soon. But yeah, thank you to all of you. Without you guys, we couldn't do this. There would be no Thralls of Metal. There'd just be four dudes hanging out talking about metal. Like we've done 20 years prior to now. (laughs) So yeah, thank you to all of our our fans and our friends and our loved ones. Thank you for keeping this thing rolling. Of course, you know, we just hit 15,000 subscribers a little bit ago. Uh Thank you guys for that. Uh, Probably the next milestone, I'm guessing, will be 20. We'll probably give away one of our new cool uh, Thralls of Metal shirts. For sure. uh, Along with a a Denver Death Fest shirt here for you so that'll be really cool but yeah thank you guys all so much and with that we will catch catch you later. later